Hello and welcome everybody. Thank you for joining me. My name is Mr. Reality from Mount Reality Forecast and I'm joined with Liz Cross. Happy holiday seasons to you, Liz. How are you? I am great. Thank you. Happy holidays to you. I've always been in interested in the mundane and the weird and the crazy. And I thought people might get an interest in hearing about General Tom Thumb, who was a, a very height challenged person, a little person back in the 1800s and worked with the P.T. Barnum Circus. I wanted to know how he felt, why he chose that little existence, and he made a big impact. Oh, okay. So you want to know why he chose? I don't feel like he chose the circus, you know. I have him here. Uh, he's saying the circus chose me. Explain what he means by the purpose chose me. And thank you for joining us, sir. The circus. Um, the circus chose you. What do you mean by the circus chose you? They approached him. They were so fascinated by who he was you know, that he was an adult um, because they thought he was a child. They were always looking for weird and wonderful people to join the circus. And they offered him a lot of money, too. He made good money in the circus. So as a, a, a person who comes into this life with infirmities or is differently abled, what lessons does he experience and how does that help him grow on his life ascension journey or soul ascension journey so in that particular lifetime he says it was all about acceptance because a lot of times now this makes me sad but i'm gonna say it anyway a lot of times he's telling me when he would you know showcase himself or when he would come out to perform people would point and laugh at him, right? And he had to move past that. He had to, he had to know that the problem was with them and not him. That was really difficult. It was very challenging and uh, very heartbreaking when he first joined the circus. But he says, I was laughed at and pointed at my entire life. Oh, they always made fun of me. He was bullied. He was physically abused. And mm -hmm. the circus gave him an outlet to accept himself. And so for his soul path journey, did he say when he was up above, before he incarnated as Tom Thumb, I would like to be born short, small statured? Yes, he chose that. He chose that as a challenge. Now, somebody asked me this last week, and I have to uh, use that question and ask him. Their question was, is it true when somebody chooses to come into this lifetime that it accelerates the soul ascension like by several lifetimes? And I'm asking Tom Thumb, and he says, yes, that's true. For him, because he chose this in his particular lifetime that he experienced, uh, he said he was able to skip at least five lifetimes. Because in that one lifetime of having this disability, I say it's a dis, dis you know, it's not really a disability. So disability is not the right word. Um, just he was different. But obviously back then it was considered like really something was terribly wrong with this person. Um, obviously we've come a long way since then. You know, they used to beat and maim and, and experiment on disabled people back in the day, he says. Right. Um, which, yes, of course, is right. He says, so definitely the mindset has come a very, you know, different in the West. There's still a lot of countries where there are disabilities, uh, people born with deformities or disabilities, just different. And um, they 
they are still treated how he was back in this particular lifetime. Uh, so he was he managed to skip many lifetimes because of this lifetime was so difficult. What were some of the challenges that he faced early on in the life as Tom Thumb and then shadow that with his success and fame when he entered in the P.T. Barnum world? Um, what were the difficulties in that lifetime? Well, he felt ashamed of himself. He felt ashamed of who he was. He hated himself. Um, he had to really step around people that were abusive verbally, physically, mentally, emotionally. He didn't really have a lot of acceptance from his own family. They mm -hmm. didn't celebrate his special, you know, him being special and him being unique. Then said they saw it as a mark against themselves. So they kept him pretty much hidden away as much as possible. And then contrast that with joining the, the P.T. Barnum world and getting um, that fame. The difference between that and the P.T. Barnum world is he was paid. He still experienced the bullying. He still experienced the laughter. He still experienced the making fun of him, the verbal abuse, uh, even by his colleagues. But he had to carve a name out for himself. And it was part of the show that people wanted to see. So therefore, he turned what he says was a negative into a positive for himself. And it was only for himself. That was the only way he was going to manage to survive because People wanted to kill him for the way he looked. That's harsh. It is. Isn't that terrible? But, you know, he's saying that lots of people went through this. You know, people went missing. This is long before there were birth records, uh, birth certificates. You know, people would just go missing. They would just be shot or killed by their family members and put in the ground. They couldn't handle somebody with this type of, uh, you know, difference. Uh, let's talk about the soul journey after his life as Tom and how that changed and what, what was the process like as he passed away and moved into the spirit world? He was glad to leave the earth plane. This, uh, this lifetime was very challenging and he doesn't have to go back and repeat that again. He says, I, I've ticked that box. I, I can move forward. Actually, in many of his lifetimes, uh, have you? he's had another lifetime since and he was very tall. He was six foot. Um, still very similar to the way he looks or he looked in that lifetime, but a very tall version of himself. And uh, he doesn't want to go back and repeat that lifetime as Tom Thumb. It, it was too heartbreaking, too difficult. Uh, he's still left with a lot of unresolved issues. And so the process or experience as you cross over into the spirit world, can he paint a picture for us as to what that looked like, what you encounter, what the process is like in between lives? Oh, yes. Uh, good question. So he's saying when he got up there, he saw his original mother. Uh, and I'm saying, what do you mean by that? Well, the, the family that he had in this particular lifetime as Tom Thumb, they were not his sole family. That was just sort of a, a fill-in sort of family for that lifetime. When he reunited with his real mother, or his, at least in a soul uh, soulmate level, he was just so happy to be accepted by her and to be welcomed into her arms. Um, and he enjoyed like 
being up there for, for a long time. He says, I had a lot to process uh, emotionally, as in, what do, I, what do I want to repeat? What do I not want to repeat? What was it that benefited me? Um, he's always been a little bit of a sort of, he's telling me an outcast in some way in a lot of his lifetimes, but that was the most uh, insane one he's ever done. He's like, I'm never doing anything like that ever again. Are there spiritual helpers or is it mostly your soul family or is it a combination or is it angels? Who's helping you process those emotions and have those emotions exist since there's no body? Um, who's, who's helping you? Uh, there's a hierarchy, right? There's, there's a hierarchy of like learning and they're in charge of your learning. They're in charge of making sure you understand what you went through. Uh, they also help you offload some of that. I mean, I feel when he went into the spirit world, there was so much sadness as well that he carried with him from that lifetime, that unresidual, sorry, unresolved, sorry, unresolved uh, sadness. So even though he became Tom Thumb, he became the showman, he still was never happy and he still felt disadvantaged. And the second part of that question was... Just how, how are the people that are working around him, how do they do that? You said they offload it or where does he go and what does the spirit world look like? Um. So the spirit world... What does it look like? It looks like whatever you want it to look like. Basically, you can manifest. It's kind of pixelated. Uh, you can you can manifest whatever it is you want uh, it to look like. So whatever is most comfortable to you. I mean, there are gardens. There's classrooms. There's like lectures. Uh, there's places where you can go and have coffee or tea or etherically anyway, meeting points. There's music um, places, you know, where people like old musicians would get together. Um, there's just a time to relax and rejoin with old friends. Um, and I think the other part of that question was, uh, where do they store the emotions, like the unresolved issues? Those right. are imprinted on the soul. So that energy from the soul is is there and it's stored in within that energy. What are some things that would surprise us about the life of Tom Thumb that we don't know? Uh, he never had sex. Uh, he's saying you would think that lots of people would have wanted to be around me and touch me and um, be, you know, near him. But he says it would just wasn't he didn't have that experience. He was married. You were married. But they didn't have sex. Wow. Who did he He's, marry? Uh, Lavinia Warren is another little person. If we can bring in Lavinia and talk to her and ask her about her life and what the experience was like as a performer. Um, she hates him. And I'm like, why are you like shoving him away? She's like, because he talked me into being in that lifetime. <laughs> Oh no. And I'm like, you've got to offer some forgiveness. And, and there, that was just a one time lifetime kind of deal. Uh, she's like, I, that was too difficult for her. What did you not have sex with? Tom? No, she says, I hated him. Weird. I don't know and what to make of it. <laughs> is Lavinia incarnated since? One time. Yes. And in that lifetime, she was where, whom? Where were you? She was in Germany and she was a soldier, a female soldier. Wow. Well, 
what would she think about the acceptance of little people and dwarfism, people that are afflicted in our society? Or does she still think that we have a long way to go? Now, how we are now. Uh, she hated this lifetime, by the way. Uh, but what do you think about it? I, it's definitely evolved, she says. It's definitely better. And again, she's saying the same thing. In the West, it's better. But there are a lot of countries where, you know, they still kill people with uh, differences. Lavinia Stratton Warren. And Tom Thumb, thanks for joining us. And thank you, Liz Cross, for bringing their messages forth. Yeah, it was very different than what I anticipated. I thought that he would probably say, you know, I had a great life. I had this. I did that. I traveled the country. I'm not getting that at all, unfortunately. I'm getting that that life was very, very difficult and never to be repeated by either of them. And on a soulmate level, definitely not. So the very different, very different than what I expected. Thanks very much. We'll see you guys Thanks. next time. Mm -hmm.